Not every model truck mud flap project needs to involve coiling square brass bar, soldering shim brass tabs, and scratch building the mud flap. There's lots of real life one to one scale examples of mud flaps and hangers that can be replicated using the kit parts. Italeri provides this style of mud flap hanger in their Freightliner FLC kit, a parts tree from which is pictured here, and also in their American Superliner. These kits are also recently reissued by Round 2 under the AMT label. It is a good representation of this style of mud flap hanger, which is hollow and incorporates a long tension spring inside it to absorb road shock and vibration. The mud flaps provided are also nicely done, cleanly molded, and close to scale thickness. The proportions of height to width are correct for this style of mud flap hanger, as shown here in this picture of a one to one scale pier built fitted with the style of mud flap and hanger. Italeri's kits are 124 scale, but the difference in actual size is so minor that these parts can be used on 125th scale trucks, such as this R model Mac. One improvement you can make to the stock Italeri kit part is to drill out the end as shown here to make the part look more like a formed piece of sheet metal and less like a solid piece of plastic. On this model I did scratch build mud flaps from styrene sheet and strip to match the rib pattern on the real truck I was modeling. While on this superliner, the kit parts were used and a decal was added for the JNF diesel service logo. The logo was drawn using a basic CAD program and printed on clear decal paper using an inkjet printer. This was possible because the decal was going to be applied on a white background. Inkjet inks are not opaque enough for this to work if applying them to a black mud flap. A pair of AMT Peterbilt mud flaps were modified by trimming away all of the pieces highlighted in red. and attaching them to a set of Italeri mud flap hangers to complete this AMT Peterbilt 352. Not every bar style mud flap hanger has a coiled end. Many of them have a simple 90 degree bend where they attach to the frame and the bracket and this type of mud flap hanger is easy modeled using kit parts. On this road boss built a number of years ago the mud flap is cut free from the hanger to which it is molded as a one piece part in the kit and shortened and then reattached. Small styrene strips were added to simulate the tabs where it bolts on and the finished mud flaps were simply glued to the frame in the stock kit locations. Although the bracket attached to the frame has not been modeled, the overall finished appearance is still quite good especially when everything has been painted. This installation used the kit supplied mud flaps with a minimum of rework. For the Mac R which is currently on the workbench we'll also use kit supplied parts but we'll make a few more changes and increase the level of detail. I'm rather partial to Macs in fact way back in the early 90s I took my commercial driver's license road test in an R600 so I definitely wanted to use these mud flaps with the Mac logo but the hanger and attachment details were rather poorly done. So the hangers were removed to be replaced with these bar style hangers which in turn came from Kenworth mud flaps that had been reworked for this project which made use of the coiled brass bar style hangers. Number one rule in modeling, never throw anything out and always keep the spares box stocked. Bottom corners of mud flaps were rounded off and excess material was trimmed off the bar hangers and they were cleaned up to resemble a simple 90 degree bent piece of square bar. 20 thou brass wire is used as a spacer to ensure a consistent gap between the mud flap and the hanger and locations are marked out for four tabs. 
These are cut from 10 thou by 60 thou styrene strip and glued in place on one side of the mud flap. And once the glue has cured, matching tabs are glued on the other side. Align the top of each tab flush with the top of the square bar hanger so that pieces of 10 thou by 60 thou strip can be glued in place across the top of the hanger. Leave these pieces extra long rather than try to cut and fit to exact size. Let the glue dry thoroughly, ideally overnight, before the next step, which is to trim off the excess and round the corners lightly with sandpaper to create the appearance of a single bent flat bar wrapped around the top of the square bar. Lay out holes using a vernier caliper to ensure consistent spacing and drill the holes out for 20 thou styrene rod. For best results, lay out the tabs on both sides of the mud flap, drill part way through from one side, then turn the mud flap over and complete the drilling operation from the other side. Although this may seem like a lot of extra work, it minimizes the chance of any misalignment when you're drilling the holes and ensures a nice clean appearance as shown here with the hole centered on each of the tabs. Just like with the air cleaner project, 20 thou styrene rod will be used to represent small bolts. Cut the pieces slightly over length and insert them in the holes. Then using the homemade depth setting tool, push each of the styrene rods through and glue in place. For this application I made the tool using 015 styrene strip for 15 thou projection. Unlike the air cleaner project, both ends of our simulated bolts will be visible, so to cut them off at a consistent even length on the back side, lay a styrene strip on top of the tabs and use this as a spacer to lay the flush cutting pliers down and nip each of the projecting styrene rods off at the same length. I used 20 thou styrene strip for this project. To simulate longer bolts, 30 thou or 40 thou strip can be used. Drilling a 1 16th hole centered in the end of a piece of 80 thou by 80 thou styrene strip is not easy, but it can be done, and we're going to cut sections of this to make the frame brackets. Cut pieces 80 thou long and glue them to short sections of 80 thou by 015 thick styrene strip, then glue this finished assembly to the frame, finishing with a pair of bolt head castings to simulate fasteners. Although the finished bracket is larger than an exact scale replica would be, it looks right in proportion to the rest of the molded parts in the model. File the ends of the square bar hangers and round the corners as required to get a nice fit into the brackets. The goal is a slightly loose fit at this unpainted stage to allow for the build up of primer and paint. A nice thing about the plastic kit part as compared to a square brass bar hanger is the ease with which a 20 thou hole can be drilled matching the hole provided in the real mud flap hangers for a retainer pin. Tamiya acrylics were used for painting with number XF69 NATO black on the hanger and XF85 rubber black on the mud flap. Brush painting is actually preferable for the mud flap because the slightly textured surface of a brush finish more closely matches the slightly rough surface of a real mud flap. To highlight the raised lettering in the bulldog, I'm using an artist colored pencil and for higher quality pencils of this nature, it's worth investing in a proper sharpener. Lightly rub the side of the pencil tip against the raised detail. This way is easier than dry brushing and gives you much more control of the color application. Seal with a light spray of dull coat when the coloring is complete. For the ultimate experience in cross-eyed madness, you can bend up a pair of spring clips from 015 music wire to go in the drilled holes that will retain the mud flaps in their brackets. This step is of course completely optional and though a little bit tedious, it's finished mud flaps installed and pins in place 
so they don't bounce out of the hangars on some of those rough northeastern highways. A closer view of the pin set in place in the drilled hole and retaining the hanger from bouncing out of the bracket over any bumps. And as always, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching all the way to the end, and I hope that you can take away some of this information and apply it to your next model project, whether it be on mudflat specifically, or any other type of modeling application.